about a talk show host. <laughs> talk show host, that's good. <laughs> I think I'd be good at that. I talk to people all the time. And so I think we, you know, uh, it hasn't been perfect. We're all grappling with how do we cover this president. Uh, but my sense of it is, is that we have to stand for the truth. We're not just here to report the news. Uh, we're here also to defend the truth. A week ago, it was Brian Ross and ABC. Ross was suspended for a breaking news report about Michael Flynn that had not been fully vetted by the network ahead of time. And since then, several more mistakes by other media outlets have caused a lot of introspection in newsrooms. You'll be nice. On Friday, CNN gave lots of airtime to an exclusive report that said then-candidate Donald Trump and Donald Trump Jr. had received an email in September 2016, an email providing a decryption key and a web address, allowing them to access hacked DNC documents before they were publicly available. Now, later that afternoon, the story unraveled. CNN's Manu Raju went on Brooke Baldwin's show to issue this correction. We have just received, obtained a, a copy of this email, uh, and instead, uh, we now learn that this, uh, this email was on September 14th, so that is 10 days uh, later than what we originally reported earlier today, and, and this is, appears to change the understanding uh, of this story. It changed the understanding quite a bit. With ABC's suspension of Raw still in the headlines, I asked CNN if there would be disciplinary action against Raju or his co-writer, Jeremy Herb. A spokeswoman said no. Because the reporters followed CNN's standards process, which means that the anonymous sources they were using for the story were vetted and okayed ahead of time. Now, the sources had been reliable in the past, but they were not this time. The spokeswoman said CNN had no reason to believe this was malicious, meaning the sources weren't trying to trick the reporters. The sources were just mistaken. But that mistake obviously caused a black eye for CNN. On Friday night, President Trump seized on the recent corrections at a rally in Florida. And by the way, did you see all the corrections the media's been making? They've been apologizing left and right. They took this fraudster from ABC. They suspended him for a month. They should have fired him for what he wrote. And then CNN apologized just a little while ago. They apologized. Oh, thank you, CNN. Thank you so much. You should have been apologizing for the last two years. Technically, CNN did not apologize, but did correct the reporting. CBS also issued a correction for the same story. And this was not the only error of the week. Did you hear about Robert Mueller's team subpoenaing Trump's bank records from Deutsche Bank? Bloomberg and Reuters had to issue corrections, saying the documents that were subpoenaed pertain to people or entities affiliated with Trump, not the president individually. Now, that is still a big development, but it's not what the news outlets originally said. The Wall Street Journal got it right in the of their story, but misconstrued it in a headline, so they had to run a correction as well. These errors have piled up this week. It also contributed to this sense uh, among uh, Trump supporters that there is this uh, campaign against them, and that there is this, uh, it, it, we can see it in Donald Trump Jr.'s tweets. I think we can put course. up some of his tweets from the past 12 hours. Look, Donald Trump Jr. is a hammer, so everything he sees is a nail, and right. everything he sees is about attacking the media. So he'll attack the media no matter what. But he's attacking the media today because he says that the press fell for this. Uh, and I just wonder how much of that we, sh we should, we should uh, acknowledge. Ow. You would be lost without Donald Trump. Well, that CNN's, is what he says. Ted, you know that's not second. true. CNN's ratings would be in the toilet without Donald Trump. <laughs>